Hey everybody, it's Alex Pertuin with HRN and MindYourLungs.com. Uh, if anybody has any questions in regards to pulmonary rehab, the boot camps, or anything like that, I have a little bit of time right now to actually at, uh, answer any questions. So if you have any questions, please write in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer them uh, as we go. While we're waiting for any questions that may arise, may or may not arise, depending if you ask a question or not, um, I only have a little bit of time until I have to go and see some patients uh, in a little bit. So in case anybody wants to know exactly who the heck am I, just so you know, I am Alex Kachuan. Uh, I am founder and CEO of HRN. I am a pulmonary care practitioner. I'm licensed under the Maryland Board of Physicians as a pulmonary care practitioner. Uh, one over, let's see, what else about me? Won over six awards nationally. Uh, I have one global award as being one of the top ones, and uh, I'm really, really good at what I do. Okay, well, I'm also a Taurus, and my birthday, don't forget, is May 10th, 1978. So every May 10th, be nice if someone says happy birthday. I'm just joking. But no, but serious, that is my birthday. Anyways, so uh, for pulmonary rehab, a lot of people are asking questions on pulmonary rehab in general, okay? And I want to state a fact, of course, because I'm not going to lie. But, so just so everyone understands, pulmonary rehab is the rehabilitation of the lungs. Now, what does that mean, rehabilitation? So you have a problem with your lungs. So let's say, let's say this, this would be our negative, this would be our positive, right? We're adding positive. Okay, so let's say you have COPD, which a lot of people do. So let's say you have COPD, and over in time it gets worse, right? Okay, it's getting worse. Okay, I want you to think about this. If you are in pony rehab and you are improving, are you getting worse? No. I know this sounds silly, but it, may, it might be confusing for some people, so I need to kind of go over this here. All right, if you're in pony rehab and you are getting better, are you getting worse? No, of course not. You're not getting worse. You're getting better. It's not rocket science. You're getting better, not worse. So I know, see, uh, we, all, we also know COPD is a progressive disease. It gets worse over time. But if you are improving, how could you be getting worse? Right? Right. Yeah. How, how could you be getting worse? The point is what I'm trying to say. That's what pony rehab's for. Okay? Pony rehab is not to get you worse to get you better, walking further, doing more, and visiting the holidays, visiting family members, sure, as long as COVID-19 is, is not, is not uh, developing a second strand. Oh, it is? Second strand? Oh, joke. <laughs> no, it's not nothing to laugh about, but it is true. There is a second strand, but we don't know anything about that. We kind of knew this was going to happen, okay? So we look at core, uh, core mobility. We're looking at People that have, that are immunocompromised, you know, uh, that our body's always fighting, so if something else invades in, they get worse really quickly. They're immunocompromised. So let's just understand what COPD really is, just in a nutshell, while I'm waiting for questions. Okay, COPD, we can always say, oh, it's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But that really wasn't the answer to the question I asked. What is it? What is it? Well, COPD... In a nutshell, is you breathe in a gallon of air, you're only getting rid of half a gallon of air. You can look at it any other way you want, but literally that's what it is. The other half a gallon is trapped in your lungs, slowly coming out. Okay, so when people are in pulmonary rehab, they're like, oh, I don't know about pulmonary rehab, they're gonna exercise me, I can't, I can't walk, I can't breathe. And I said, yeah, well, we don't want people who can walk yet. You know, we, we don't want people that can do miles. We want people who are sick. You know, kind of defeats the purpose, you know. We're not personal trainers over here. We're clinicians. You know, we have a vast amount of clinicians. So you, you know, I understand about being scared about, like, let's say last time I went up this hill or last time when I went up this these stairs, I got very winded. I nearly passed out. Does that happen to you? Okay. That, those are the people I want. I want the people that are complex. But if you wait to the last moment until, well, I'm going to procrastinate, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait. I forgot. I thought COPD was a progressive disease. So why would you wait? Okay? I'm not selling you this. I'm a clinician. Okay? 
But what I am trying to help you with, word help, okay, is to help you with some of these problems. This is not a magic pill. You work out. You're going to work out. Well, Alex, I can't breathe because that's the first thing we're going to work out. We're going to work out your lungs. We're going to stretch your lungs out. We are going to work intercostal diaphragmatic muscles. You're going to feel soreness in parts of your body you didn't even realize existed. But that's what you should be expecting. No one that stays the same with us. We're HRN. We're a valued, we're a valued medical program in our medical or just in the community itself. Not just local, we're telemedicine. You don't understand what telemedicine is. We, you see us, we see you, we do therapy together. You know, this is not FaceTime, though I would love to see everybody's faces. This is not FaceTime. We need to be able to see waist and up. We want to see you breathing. If we saw one side going up, the other side not, then we're thinking, okay, there is non-bilateral movements, so one side's going up, one side's not, might be high consolidation on the other side, let me investigate. We can't do everything over the phone. You can't just go on YouTube and, oh, I hope, try to find somebody on YouTube Okay, now mind you, we are on YouTube, so let me, let me change that a little bit. <laughs> Trying to find something. Let me, let me back up there for a second. <laughs> we started going on YouTube because we found a lot of people, look, we're only trying to reach people that can't, that have a hard time trying to find us. Did you know HRN existed? Did you know that HRN has a 98 percentile success rate? Do you think we just sit back and have everyone take medications? That's not who we are. We work out muscles. But there's people trying to find us. And you know what? As a team, as a disciplinary team, we are going to help those people. But we have to find them. Uh, question? Yeah, I actually have a question for you. Love it. So I know you went into this a little bit, mm -hmm. but who can you like describe for me who the ideal candidate for pulmonary therapy is? Absolutely. That's a great question. So for pony rehab, we want uh, to meet qualifications. There are some qualification guidelines. They're not very sophisticated, but you have to have COPD. Uh, moderate to very, very severe COPD is preferable. Now, just because you don't have that, you can still qualify. If you have COVID-19, that's an automatic qualification right there. Okay, but you have to have COPD to get in. It would be kind of defeats the purpose if we're working your lungs and all you have is a little little light muscle on the leg just doesn't make any sense you know we want somebody with lung problems lung issues you know so you and i always i always say like this though i always think like this i know somebody well of course i know somebody with copd i'm a clinician but i'm saying there's a lot of people that know somebody that have breathing problems you yourself might know somebody who has breathing difficulties it doesn't they don't have to have severe complications we offer we offer a it's a program, uh, these are the boot camps. These are actually, you see me as a clinician on the boot camps. All you have to do is show up. I mean, you, literally, that's all you have to do is show up. It's free, sure it is, okay? But uh, yeah. No, just when's our next boot camp meeting? Next boot camp is in, is it, ooh, let me double check. We got one in about 11 to 12 minutes. 12 minutes from now, at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Be there or be square. It was an old thing saying. I don't know why I had it out. And, you know, we try to have fun here sometimes, you know. If I just talk like this the whole time, it's very boring. You don't want that. You want somebody who's going to be a little uplifting. So I try to be a little amusing. And I make sure, that, or these guys make sure I have plenty of coffee before I go on air with you guys. So I can stay awake and alert and oriented. Uh, but uh, uh, boot camps, understand what boot camps. Boot camps are, yes, they are free. Okay? Is there a catch? We are clinicians. We're not salesmen. So I'm not sure where else anybody would get that confused. Oh, there's always a catch. No. If you like the program, you can continue. Do I force you to come in the program? By law, law. I cannot force you to do anything you don't want to do. You make the choice. You make the call if you want to continue it or you're satisfied with the boot camps and what it provided. Remember, the boot camps, I give about four to five types of techniques. You learn about 1,700, 1,700 different types of techniques and work out with the clinicians, work out with everything you possibly can uh, and what you can do with the clinicians three days a week. And 
and the time usually averages 30 to 90 minutes sometimes, all depends on which classes you're in. But uh, yeah, you're in for about three months. If you need more time, you need more time. But I don't force you to do that. Boot camps are, you, you can attend four classes. That's it. If you like it, continue. If you don't like it, no worries, okay? But everyone who's had been in the boot camps have already said they love it. So it's, it's not rocket science, but go ahead. Yeah, it seems like you've been pretty succinct and clear, so we don't have any questions, but we do have one comment from the audience. Melody Smith says, look at you all dressed up, very handsome, Alex. Did you like that? I didn't have my wife to pick this one out. I picked it out myself. And you know what? Somebody said, you're wearing pink. I said, it's salmon. Salmon! <laughs> no, it is pink, but it's salmon. But uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, once in a blue moon, I have to dress up once in a while, but um, I like the scrubs, you know, it's not every day. I mean, how many jobs you can go to and wear pajamas, you know, I'm, I'm all for that one. Coffee, pajamas, all I need. And, you know, obviously I, I would have to wear clogs, but I would wear the fluffy slippers. I would. You know, unfortunately, that's not the case, but I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay, so for uh, resources, I want everyone to understand proper resources, just really quick. Okay, proper resources, when you're looking up information, medical information, there's a lot of good resources to choose from. Now, Wikipedia should not be a resource. Uh, different, like, different people on Facebook might not be a great resource, especially if they're not clinicians. I mean, you wouldn't ask somebody who worked in a just, and I'm not saying they would know. Okay, but we're not talking about goodwill hunting here. But if you ask the custodial how to change a heart, I'm pretty, you know, it might not be the greatest advice unless the person went through med school, you know. So it's, you, you understand, I'm not downsizing anybody here. I'm just I'm stating fact. Good resources. So, one good resource, okay, American Association, or you can just write this down, aacvpr.org organization. Okay, that's the American Association of Cardiovascular Pulmonary Rehabilitation. I did not make that name up. They did. Blame them on that one. There is another, so that, very good guidelines there, by the way, very good guidelines. When it comes to cardiac and pulmonary, very good guidelines there. We also have the American Lung Association. That's a very good resource tool to use. Uh, Emphysema Foundation of America, very good resource tool. Uh, there's this wellness, a wellness clinic um, I will not be affiliated or want to ever be affiliated with the pulmonary wellness clinic with NOAA. Never will happen. Okay? For good reason. Please don't ask me why. Very good reason. We use clinicians, not people who think they know everything upon everything. So, and I'm not saying that's what it is, but oh boy. Anyways, long history. Don't worry about it. All right, another good resource. Uh, so there is the American Chest Physician Guidelines, uh, you know, so ATS, American Thoracic Society, that's a very good resource to use. So when you're looking at facts, you don't just pick up anything and everything. Just because it's on a book doesn't mean it's fact. You want places that actually investigate. Now, my healthcare team's excellent spot to look at facts because I've actually literally had the pleasure of working with those individuals. And they, I have to say, are excellent. My healthcare teams, the CEO is Eric Peacock. I could not believe how devoted they were. So I have to give, I mean, whoo, whoo, bring down the house type of thing. Not every clinician will do that, but I just did. So those people actually take time to investigate every single thing. And on top, in my book, they're A+. Plus. They're A+, plus in my book. You don't have to, but 3.8 million people do. Okay? Over 24 million people altogether, through every single thing else, listen to them as well. Okay? So there has to be a good reason behind it, but I had the pleasure of working with them, and I still do. And they're very, very good. And they use investigative review boards, they investigate, they analyze, they investigate, they analyze. I mean, you're talking about really good people there. Um, also, good resources. Obviously, you, you know, nothing beats your own doctor, right? If, unless your doctor's not a great doctor. 
Uh, but uh, that's a good resource when you're asking for medical information. Anytime you have a medical information, you should never consult with anybody but your own doctor first. Now, if that doctor has not, does not have the answer, pretty sure they have resources for you to follow to give you the proper answer to a certain question that he or she might not be able to ask or answer, rather. Okay, any other questions on anything? Um, we got a couple comments, no questions. We got from Diane Pierce. Hi, Alex. From Fanny Dickerson. Hello, Alex. Hi, then, Fanny. You feeling better now? <laughs> and then Melody Smith followed up. She says, I highly recommend. He is great. So I guess a thank you to her for the shout-out. Thank shout you well. very much. And then I had one more question. So Please. I know you had mentioned, you know, to be careful about what YouTube videos you're watching. I'd say they could probably trust our YouTube videos. Well, yeah, because we're actually licensed clinicians. Uh, so and yeah, definitely trust our YouTube videos. Now, I'm not saying the other YouTube videos aren't good. You know, I, I there's just a plethora, but you have a plethora of all these videos. I mean, you're talking about millions and millions of videos all over the place, but it doesn't mean they're showing you proper technique. And, you know, because if that was the answer, why isn't everybody saying that? But they are saying HRN is getting them better. Okay, but so not everybody on YouTube is a clinician. Some people act like they're a clinician. You can look, lit, lick, can't believe I even said that. You can literally look me up on the Maryland Board of Physicians by going to Maryland, okay, American Physician, I'm sorry, Maryland Physician, okay, look up, just simple look up, look up my name, Alexander Grichuin, okay, I didn't make up the name, it's my name, it's what I was born with, okay, imagine living, trying to spell that in the last name, anyways, but look up the name and my license number is active, I have no no, nothing under there as, as in regards to anything bad I've ever done or anything like that. Nothing. Clear record on everything. Okay? It's active and it's valid. All right? That's what you should need. You need somebody who knows what the heck they're doing, not somebody who pretends. All right? I'm not saying everyone on YouTube is like that, but we did find there was a lot on there. We found people that said they were clinicians and they weren't clinicians. We found people that said they were nurses, they were not nurses. We found people that said they were doctors, and they were doctors 20 years ago when, you know, until their license was taken away for some good odd reason. And I can't mention why, you know, but, uh, well, I don't have to mention names, but uh, somebody gave, inf like, some doctor gave uh, information and got their license taken away uh, or something, and it was another one. Uh, uh, you get my point, is not everybody on there is going to be licensed, valid, and just by asking a doctor that used to be a doctor, used to, okay, might not be the greatest advice for you. And they certainly probably don't know you. Because two people with COPD are not identical besides the diagnosis. Some person would be more out of breath going upstairs while the other person might not be as out of breath. Some person would have more lung disease on the left than on the right. And the other person has more on the right than on the left. People have, it's very different. It's a fingerprint. And remember, COPD is an umbrella term. There's five types, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and what's the last one? Asthma, the later descent of asthma, okay? But yes, five types. It's like saying, hey, I have heart disease. There is a couple hundred of those. Uh, which one? I don't know. Corporanali, you know, there's a lot, it's just an umbrella term is what I'm trying to say. Being specific on those, if I have COPD and emphysema, that doesn't make any sense. Emphysema is COPD, right? So there's five types. So if you just say COPD, okay, then I have to figure out what five, you know, which one of the five or how many of the five do you have? Um, any other questions on anything? Uh, yeah, there's really quickly, because we have about one minute left, Melody asks, why is my breathing worse in the evening? Oh, very good. Okay, breathing is worse in the evening. You know, it, Melody, somebody asked me before, they asked me, um, Alex, why am I so hungry? I said, did you eat? Like, no, that's why. So, <laughs> uh, so a lot of times, like, in the evenings, like, in the mornings, what did we do in the mornings that was different from the evening besides time duration? Well, sometimes we took a rescue medication let's say we took a, re a respiratory medication it kind of alleviated some things at the beginning in the morning you're not exposed to a lot you know because you just woke up you're staying one still uh versus okay so i woke up in the morning i took my respiratory medications i felt really really good but then in the evening i felt a little worse um all right so what happened over the evening that made it worse 
So I would investigate that is what I'm trying to say. Like some people were cooking and the fumes or maybe the oil, you know, were, you know, basically, there's, there's a lot of reasons. It could be environmental exposures, but, uh, you know, I always take a look and see how bad it get to 10 being the worst. How bad was your breathing 10, you know, 10 being the worst? Well, it's only when I move. And I say, well, that doesn't make any sense because you're always moving. Your heart's always pumping. Your brain's always uh, working, you know, but it all depends on the situation. But I think more investigation would be needed. Any others really quick? Uh, no, but, and we should finish in a second, but I have one last question. So if people want more content like this, is it safe to say they should go follow our YouTube channel? I would, yes. I would definitely recommend everybody, everybody, we're going to provide a link, okay? Everybody should be following our YouTube videos, okay? They're free. There'll be a lot of great content in there. And it's not like we're not a reputable company. We are. I'm a reputable person and I'm, I'm pretty easy to talk to, you know, and not that bad to look at too. I'm just joking. But, uh, but seriously, go on YouTube. And if you have friends that could use a little help, even a little bit, give them the link too. Tell them, to, you know, it'll help. You have no idea what things like that would perpetuate to. You help one person, that person, and then you help another person. And that person said the, the, the same thing and it just turns into this big wildfire. And helps a lot of people. Look, we're only here to help. I, 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 I'm pretty sure by now everyone understands that we are not just legit, but we are the real deal. I mean, the real deal. But of course we would be. You know, there was a, just re really one quick comment, really quick. I'm going to mention one comment. Somebody called in. It, it was kind of funny to us because this wasn't the first time. But somebody called in and said, I checked your license and your license is valid. I checked to see if you have any criminal histories and everything was valid. And I'm not mentioning the name, okay? But it was funny to us. I verified every single thing and I found that you guys are legit. I said, well, yeah. Okay, I just wanna make sure you know that. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like if I go into a hospital and say, I wanna see everybody's license. Everybody's license, I don't believe this is a hospital. I said, okay, what do you need to be sure? I need to see everyone's license. I wanna make sure you're legit. I said, well, we're, we're a facility. We're, we're an actual, we're a licensed facility. We're an actual telemedicine company. What else do you need, you know? But that was kind of funny. Somebody called and just did, they signed up and everything. Yes, 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 yes. But the fact that they actually went way out of the way to verify every single thing was awesome to me. Uh, but it was funny because I was like, well, what? You do realize that our license, each clinician's license has to be investigated by the FBI. And one felony would actually take the license away. So why would we do anything fake? That would be the worst, dis literally the worst disgusting thing in the world, but it would make us a fraud and we would hurt our reputation like that. Why would we risk that? Well, I'm just letting you know, I just checked everything and I didn't, uh, you know, at first I was fishy. I mean, Alex, you have to understand. And I was like, okay, all right, all right. It's like, oh, well, you have to understand that, you know, in these day of age, we're getting calls left and right by these telemarketers. I said, but you called me, I didn't call you. Good point. Good point. Yes, I did call you. I said, so what are you selling? Like, nothing. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Just look at his comments. Well, guys, that's it. But yes, we are legit. We are the real deal. It's Pawnee Rehab. It's just done virtually. Okay. Same, if not much better success rates than a traditional facility. And that's a fact. Okay. Just look at the American Thoracic Society, 2017 of May. I'll just type in on a Google search, online pulmonary rehab versus traditional rehabilitation, and it'll pull it up, okay? Look at the 2017, they verified it over and over and over and over again. Telemedicine, it's in, and it's permanent. I'll see you guys later. See ya.